Yeah, it's a leather jacket, bro. That made me feel strong, bro. <laughs> that leather jacket made me feel. It just gives you gives you a weight. You just carry yourself differently. And Judas and the Black Messiah is um, told through the eyes of um, William O'Neill um, about Chairman Fred Hampton and his rise in the Illinois chapter of the Black Panther Party and the predicament that he's got himself into. Yeah, well, you know, it's a, it's a film that is our portrayal of the life of uh, someone that was a Jesus-like figure that was taken down by forces that don't understand Jesus-like people and don't want to see them thrive and live. So you get to see the dynamics of what it means to be a hero and a truth teller in a world where the truth is always trying to be uh, beaten down and taken away. The Black Panthers are forming a rainbow coalition of oppressed brothers and sisters of every color. Their aim is to sow hatred and inspire terror. I will learn all that I can. I will learn. These ain't no terrorists. You can murder a liberator, but you can't murder a liberation. You can murder a revolutionary, but you can't murder a revolution. And you can murder a freedom fighter, but you can't murder freedom. Uh, yeah, I played Chairman Fred Hampton, yeah. There's just little words, don't even, he's like a, he's a, he's a revolutionary, he is a, a vessel, he is like, was wise beyond his years, he fearless and was able to find commonality between enemies, which, and, and be able to articulate that and stitch that together and not dismiss people's feelings individual individual groups' feelings and get them to still be together. Um, but you don't, there's not many people that have lived that had the ability that he had. And yeah, so it was it was a it was a lot to kind of to get my to get my heart my, my heart and my head run. I play William O'Neill. Um, and now I can say that with confidence. <laughs> it wasn't always the case. It was so inspiring. I had to read it several times before I could talk to anybody about it because I didn't believe it was real. Uh, I didn't know that, you know, we actually would be telling these stories at this time. So I was, I was really moved by it. And I was like, oh yeah, I can't wait to play Fred. Obviously that's who you're thinking about me for, right? And I had never heard of uh, William O'Neill. So then I looked him up and I was like, oh damn, I kind of look like this dude. You know, and, uh, and, and I tried I had to realize and wrestle with my own morals and try and figure out a way to sort of uh, situate myself in this character and find the humanity and truth in him. And it took me a long time to do. I mean, even when we was on set, I was still feeling like, damn, am I even doing the right thing by playing this person? You're looking at 18 months for the stolen car, five years for impersonating a federal officer, or you can go home. There was so much infiltration that took place, you know, with the FBI. And I think that's a, kind of the, one of the beautiful aspects of the film that shows how directly involved the government was with uh, and how vigilant they were in dismantling these groups that came up. And Black Panthers is one of many groups that was you know, uh, fighting for liberation and got broken down by the government. And one of the main ways they do that is they infiltrate. I was happy that we were able to sort of lift the veil beyond it and realize there's a lot of misinformation about the Black Panthers, like, you know? And like, who's the real cat? Is it O'Neill? Or is it the agencies that put him in that position to do that, you know? Who's the mouse? One one day that we did was uh, we, we, we shot on the, the 50th anniversary of um, Chairman Fred's uh, murder. That day was so heavy, so heavy. And on that day, I feel like I, I felt uh, that they felt consistently that they could just get taken out at any moment, mm -hmm. at any moment. That was just their, that's their life. Like it was every day, and and they still move forward. That's it. They, 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 like anything is better than what the people were living and still living at this current moment in the dynamics and the oppression and the systematic racism that's been put in place. Like, and there were a group of people that just said, "Enough's enough." You, you got to do something, say, say in this lifetime, at least I stepped up. At least I said I did what I wanted to do. And that was led from his love for the people, his love of black people, and went to awaken them for themselves so they can empower themselves.
I hadn't been in that many situations that were similar to that. I hadn't even been to a concert in my life. So being in a room full of people and hearing somebody speak was a, uh, a rather new format for me. So um, I think everybody was sort of taken by that and moved by that. And in Fred's words, they were so damn powerful and they were so real and spoke to, I think, how people were feeling now in one way or another. And so when he speaks, the whole room moves. It's a spiritual thing. You, know? you got to get sucked up in it because it's because it's there. It's real. It's energy. Like you can't you can't ignore it. So you know you got uplifted, and then you looking out in the audience, and you know it's all these beautiful black people with beautiful black hair and black skin. And so you know that that was just a. I think it was just moving for all of us. I would love people to find the Black Panther reading list, um, <laughs> and what the what the what you had to read in order to to get into the party, the six week education, to 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 go through that list. Um, it'd be incredible to understand the ideas and um, the ideology and the uh, and philosophies that they were carrying, you know, and um and and see that they were deep thinkers, deep thinkers who who understood a lot about life and about how systems work. So I would, I would love them to, to, to go through that list.